so I have a bit of a journey getting to this point. Um, and the point of this talk is to actually help people to ask the question. So we sometimes get stuck um, when it comes to mental health and even how to navigate that question. And then what do we even do when somebody actually says, no, actually, I'm not okay. And we sometimes get really uncomfortable in answering that question or helping people through that. So um, are you okay? It came about because of um, Gavin Larkin's father passed away or he died by suicide and this became his mission. Um, he also unfortunately <laughs> passed away from cancer um, in his journey to launch this as well. Um, so in the time that it can take to have a cup of coffee, you could actually save a life. My journey to Are You OK um, came about because uh, I actually grew up in an environment of child abuse. So for 17 years, for the first 17 years of my life, all I actually knew was violence. And I didn't really know much more outside of that. And I thought that was the norm. So I thought everybody else's lives became this strange play when anybody else turned up. And then the moment that anybody left, it became this war zone. And that's what I grew up in. So when I was 17, I was actually homeless, and I was actually really grateful to be homeless. And I was homeless because of economic circumstances. So our family lost our family home, and I ended up living on the streets. Um, then four years ago, so I got myself out of that. I got an education. I dropped out of the education. I failed university. <laughs> um, and then I subsequently ended up working in sales in telecommunications, and I became a manager within Telstra. Then about four years ago, I lost a partner. So my fiance died in a motorcycle accident, um, which was, in comparison to the scale of things in my life, that was actually the worst thing that had happened to me. Suddenly, I had the police at my door, and I had to identify the body of the person that I loved. So I got to a point of no return. I was in the deepest, darkest pit that I couldn't see myself getting out of. I didn't know how to dig myself out of that hole. Um, and I came very close to taking my own life. The only reason I didn't take my own life, and I want to point out at this point, I've always been surrounded by amazing friends. I have incredible friends and incredible network. And I had called that day 20 of my friends and my mum. <coughs> Not a single one of them picked up the phone. And they didn't pick up the phone because it was like, oh, God, Ming. Oh. It was just timing, really bad timing. Um, a bit, about two weeks prior to my partner dying, ironically, um, I had actually helped out at an event for Lifeline to raise money for Lifeline Brunch. And I hadn't heard of, hadn't heard of Lifeline before then, didn't know who they were. And that event, we actually raised $350,000 for that event, and so my logic stepped in. It was like, well, help them raise $350,000. I'm sure they can take one phone call. That phone call was actually the phone call that saved my life. The reason I'm here today is because of that phone call. The woman on the end of that phone was the first person in four weeks who had actually asked me about my partner's life instead of asking me how he had died. And that was enough for me to realise that life was so much more than this final moment. So what Are You OK believes is that you don't have to be an expert to ask the question and to help someone out and to have a conversation. And that conversation could be something that saves somebody's life. So it all comes down to face-to-face, -face, meaningful conversations. These are the people we're trying to reach. So family and friends, the support network of people who might be in crisis. And we're talking to you. One of the wonderful things that I love about this is the fact that we are having this conversation. I am standing here today. That's an indicator that we're moving in the right direction the fact that I am standing here today. So. There's something we need to talk about. It's happening in Australia and will impact many of us. Suicide. An average of eight people die by suicide every day in Australia alone. For every death, it's estimated 30 people will attempt
attempt to take their life, and 89% of people report knowing someone who has attempted it. So why is this happening? Research shows that when these three factors combine, it increases someone's risk of suicide. 1. Feeling isolated or disconnected from others. 2. The belief that they are a burden on others or society. And 3. Having the means to take their life. Are You OK? is working to ensure everyone feels connected and is protected from suicide. We focus on reducing feelings of isolation and disconnection. But how do we do this? We all experience life's ups and downs and things like grief, relationship breakdown, financial difficulty or losing a job. These moments can really challenge us and sadly many people feel they don't have anyone to confide in but there is something that can help. You. Are You OK's impact is helping you make a difference to the people who are struggling with life. We do this by encouraging you to invest more time in the people around you because when our relationships are strong, we're more likely to see those signs that someone's struggling. And when you see those signs, notice changes, or just feel that something's not quite right with your friend, colleague, loved one, teammate or neighbor, we want you to trust that gut instinct. Reach out to them and ask, are you okay? You don't have to wait until they're in crisis. The earlier you reach out, the better the result. We know it can sometimes feel uncomfortable, especially if the person answers, no, I'm not okay, and that's okay. But you can make a difference if you follow Are You OK's four conversation steps. One, ask, are you okay? Two, listen. Three, encourage action. And four, check in. By making time to look out for those around you, you can help people feel connected and help them access appropriate support long before they think about suicide. If we all meaningfully connect with those who may be struggling with life, we can increase people's sense of belonging and create a world where we're all connected and are protected from suicide. Ask, are you okay? And start a conversation that could change a life. Oh, sorry. Right. <laughs> um, so in my example, it was grief um, and the loss of a loved one. And I've been through financial strain and lots of other things and we all have just stuff. Stuff just happens, right? And we reach our peak point of not coping. So how do we know when somebody needs support? Sometimes it can actually be the complete opposite of them being dishevelled. If their normal state is a bit dishevelled, a bit down and then suddenly they start to look good, there's been examples where people have actually started doing that because they've actually made a decision. Um, or it could just be the fact that they're not turning up to work on time on a regular basis. It could be the way that they carry themselves. It could be the language that they're using. You know, we all have that gut feeling when we know something's not quite right. So, we have four steps, um, but before that, we actually have some other things, so three things to consider. So first of all, be ready for that conversation. I think a lot of the time, I actually didn't know what to say when somebody would say to me or confide in me that they weren't okay. So being ready for that conversation and having your own self-care in check, making sure you're okay. And are you ready to listen? Because if you're in crisis, sometimes, what we do as a nice distraction is try and fix everybody else's problems <laughs> in an avoidance of our own. Yeah. Pick your moment. Um, so I've often had conversations with some people in this room, actually, where we've had conversations and they've gone, oh, look, I'm not really ready. I've got lots of things going on. Everything's really stressed. I'm in crisis point. I can't really. That's OK. Are you free tomorrow? Are you free the next day? When are you free? You tell me. Setting that time aside and actually making a time with that person. So the four steps. The first one is, are you OK? And this gets a lot of focus. And a lot of people will often go, um, oh, you know, it's more than just a question. Yeah, it is. It is actually more than just a question. And there's lots of ways you can ask this question as well, instead of this one day in September where people ask the question. Um, our theme for this year as Are You OK? has been every day is Are You OK? Day. 
because we took feedback. <laughs> um, so when I ask, are you OK, a lot of the time it might look like, hey, you've been on my mind. I just thought I'd check in. Um, in one case, I had a dream of a friend, and he was a cowboy. And I thought that was really random and out of left field. So I sent him a message saying, hey, look, I had a dream about you. You were a cowboy. It prompted me to message you. I hope this isn't too weird for you. <laughs> so. Listen. Listen is about listening without judgment. So often when somebody says something that we're uncomfortable about, we suddenly want to fix it. It isn't actually about fixing the problem for them. Sometimes we just need somebody to rant to and release on. Um, don't interrupt. Don't rush that conversation through. Don't try and get to the end. Yeah. Also, if they get upset at you, it's not about you. They're usually just upset in that moment. And sometimes we can lash out the ones that we love. Um, encouraging action is about suggesting ideas as to what they could do to get out of... So if it's um, they've been made redundant, I've had quite a few friends this year who've been made redundant and they didn't know how to deal with that situation. So it would be a conversation of, well, have you considered doing this? Have you... What does your LinkedIn look like? <laughs> um, so another option might be to suggest them talking to another person that they feel comfortable and confiding with. <laughs> ah, technical difficulties. <laughs> um, so it might be suggesting they go to their GP and get onto a mental health plan. Um, up to about, a couple, about three years ago, I didn't even know about mental health plans. I was like, how do you talk to a psych? I tried calling one and they didn't call me back. What do I do now? Yeah, which is not an ideal situation. <laughs> but every now and then it happens, or every now and then they might get really busy. Um, and I luckily had a friend of mine who was studying psych who was like, let's go see a doctor. And she dragged me to see a doctor. And then the doctor was literally the worst. <laughs> she was awful bedside manner. <laughs> and um, basically talked to my friend like I wasn't even there. <laughs> And thankfully, my friend still helped coax me through the whole experience. Um, so, you know, um, and now I have an amazing therapist who, very similar to Julie, also talks about Star Trek as well and relates me to being Mr. Spock because I'm very logical. <laughs> <laughs> so the final step is checking in. So making sure that, you know, okay, so we've got a couple of actions. What's the actions going to be that you're going to do in the next week? And checking in and seeing how they go with those actions. How'd you go with following that up? How'd you go checking in with your doctor? How'd you go with updating your LinkedIn? The check-in is actually really, really imp important because it reminds them as well that you're still on their mind, that they're still on your mind. So there's a whole bunch of resources. Learning the four conversation steps is a good starting point. Um, they're on the website for areyouok.org.au. Um, so the four steps are number one, anybody? Ask. Yeah. Number two, listen without judgment. Number three, encourage action. Number four, check in. Yeah. Um, so you can count them all on your hand. It's really easy. Um, so there's more and more resources on the website that are building. There's more stories as well that you can share um, that are really useful. So who will you ask? Rhetorical question. Don't nobody ask. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs>